This video is intended for a student taking principle of finance at Humboldt State University. In this video, I'm going to explain very briefly what capital asset pricing model or CAPM is and what are its application. Once I explain very briefly, and I'm going to go and show how to estimate CAPM model in Excel. So CAPM is one of the most widely used asset pricing as well as portfolio formation model. So I have tried to give you the bird's eye view of the model in my three slides. I, I don't want to spend time explaining these slides. Please read these slides very carefully. In this first slide, I explain what CAPM is, how the CAPM equation looks like, what does mean beta, what does mean alpha, and what are the factors that affect estimated values of alpha and beta. In the next slide, I explain one of the applications of CAPM. CAPM has different applications and in this slide I have explained how CAPM can be used to make a portfolio as well as evaluate the performance of a portfolio or an individual stock. In the next slide I explain how CAPM can be used to estimate the equity cost of capital. Remember when we estimated variables cost of capital we needed to calculate cost of debt as well as cost of equity, right? And we learned different way to calculate cost of equity in the last time, but here we can use the CAPM model to estimate the cost of equity. So I want you guys read this and if you are not very familiar with the term I have used, you can Google it and try to learn it. And I just want to explain now how can we estimate CAPM model in Excel? There are two ways to estimate alpha and beta for CAPA model in Excel. Method one, we can use uh, Excel's intercept and slope functions. That's the method one, which is less favorable. The method two, which is more favorable, is we can use Excel's regression function. So I have given you the step here. You can follow the steps and I'm going to show this now how to estimate CAPA model in Excel. I have an Excel file. In this Excel file, in the first column, I have date. In column B, I have stock price for Verizon. In, uh, in column C, I have stock price for Microsoft. In column D, I have a uh, value of S and V fiber index. And in column E, I have risk free rate. And my starting date is again January 2001, and it goes all the way to December 2015. So before we go uh, do anything further, what we have to do all the time is we have to calculate return. So let's calculate return. So you are very familiar how to calculate return, right? So simply the current price minus the past price and over past price. I have been showing this here so that you get less confused. Once you calculate for one, you can drag it for the rest two and then you can just double click it. Okay, we got the simple return series. Now to calculate portfolio return, you need to know the weights, right? And for this example, I have assumed that 40% of money is being invested on Verizon, 60% on Microsoft. So all we have to do is 40% times return of Verizon plus 60% time return on Microsoft, right? So if you do this, now you have you have the first return for portfolio and you double click it you get that here and now again change the format for okay so this is our uh, portfolio return now what I want to do is since we all of these are in a percent so what I want to do is the given risk free rate is not in percent already in the whole number I just want to convert that into percent so what I would do is simply divide this by 100 and express this as a percent. So I have now risk free rate in percent two because to run regression or to calculate alpha and beta, we have to have all this risk free rate and return in the same unit. So first we calculate return series and we, we completed that. Now we need to calculate excess return because if you see CAPM equation here, I'm going to use the second version of the CAPM, which is the same end, but the risk free rate is on the uh, left hand side. So here, return of individual stock or portfolio minus risk free rate equals to alpha plus beta times here 
market return minus risk free rate right this is called excess market return and this is called excess individual or portfolio stock return so what i want to do first of all is i want to calculate excess return so let's calculate excess verizon return so that is simply look at the top here uh, verizon return minus risk free rate so all i have to do is here uh, verizon return right here minus risk free rate which is this one so i have now the verizon excess return similarly you can calculate excess return per microsoft which would be microsoft return minus risk free rate so that gives me excess microsoft return so now to calculate excess s p 500 return i just need the s p 500 return minus risk free rate so i got that too and now to calculate portfolio excess return all i need is portfolio return minus risk pre rate right so once you calculate that you just can double click and you just calculate now excess return series so we have now all these excess return series here this is what we are going to use to calculate alpha beta or r squared for cap m right so let's calculate alpha uh, using the first method so remember uh, the first method is basically uh, use the slope and intercept Excel functions. So here, let me calculate uh, cap M alpha and beta using slope or intercept function. So I just want to calculate uh, uh, cap M. I just want to calculate alpha for Verizon. Here, what you would do is here intercept. So uh, intercept, and once you click intercept, y values, which means excess Verizon return right here excess Verizon return and comma excess market return which is going to be this guy so by doing this uh, you can simply calculate the alpha for Verizon similarly you can calculate beta for this one you just need the slope slope and now your dependent variable again or the y value is still uh, going to be your excess verizon return right here and comma your independent variable or x values is going to be excess market return so here we have excess market return so by doing this you can calculate alpha and beta and you can also calculate r squared rsq which gives us r squared uh, if you are not familiar with r squared then maybe you can google and try to find it and now again your y value is going to be excess verizon return and your x value is going to be excess market return similarly you can calculate alpha beta or r squared for your uh, Microsoft which I'm going to leave it for you. similarly you can also calculate for portfolio if you want to calculate uh, alpha beta or r square for your portfolio all you would do is uh, here you want to use the intercept right intercept intercept and now y values in this time your excess portfolio return is going to be your y value comma your excess market return is going to be your x value so okay we got that cap m alpha and beta again uh, slope we're gonna use the slope here uh, slope and now again y value is going to be excess portfolio return and x value is going to be excess market return so that's all we do this okay so we got the cap and beta for portfolio as well and if you want to calculate r squared what you can do is basically again rsq right rsq and your y value is going to be your excess portfolio return comma excess market return so this is how we can calculate r squared so now i want to estimate cap and model using the method second right if you look at the method second here what you have to do is step one you have to click on data 
and then click on data analysis and on the data analysis you have to choose the regression once you choose the regression here and now you have the y input range x input range y is always uh, what is the excess return for the portfolio or individual stock so i'm going to calculate alpha beta r squared only for portfolio the remaining you can do by yourself so i'm going to just click on here and choose y as my uh, portfolio excess return and x as a excess market return always so excess market return is going to be my x value so once you make that two selection all you have to do is click ok and it will give us the result in different new excel sheet right here and three things we should care here is one is the r square or adjusted r square right here and second you want to look at the p values here p value whether the p values are less than five percent or not if p values are not less than five percent the meaning of alpha or beta doesn't make any sense so first thing you would like to do is look at the p-value whether the p-value is less than five percent or not in this case the p-value for intercept is our alpha this is our uh, alpha and the x variable is our beta so if you look at here so our p-value is not less than five percent that means the alpha is not meaningful or is not usable so we we don't rely on that one so the second is beta if you look at the if you look at the p-value for beta this is less than five percent that means the value of the beta makes some sense and is meaningful but one thing i just want to point this out is though here is this is our alpha and beta for a portfolio and if you go let me copy this to guys here and let's go to the one we already calculated and ne put next to each other here let's see whether the numbers are same or not see here these two numbers are the same similarly if you look at r squared here r squared here it's also going to be the same so that means whether you follow the method one or method two they give the same number but the advantage of method two is that you can look at the p-value and and decide whether the number here the coefficient or the estimate makes sense or not so i have just explained how to calculate a capm alpha capm beta and r square for a portfolio you can follow the same procedure and calculate capm alpha beta r square for individual stock all you have to do is change the dependent variable meaning the series for the y values and you can just estimate that and i'm going to limit this for you this is how we can calculate capm model in excel